Hey guys, got another ham radio video here. So this is my HF go bag for ham radio stuff. Um, I've put a lot of work into this. I'm going to dig into this, show you guys kind of how I have this set up. Um, but this allows me to pretty much do a bunch of HF stuff in the field. Um, as well as I can also do VHF, UHF stuff as well with it. But it's kind of primarily set up as an HF go kit. Um, this is my radio bag um, and my laptop to grab and go if I were to um, go out and do radio operations. So this would be like something I could use for like soda activations. I want to try to do that here soon. Um, as well as all kinds of other stuff. Um, any kind of like emergency preparedness type of stuff. Um, this is kind of like the grab and go kit and I've been kind of tweaking on this recently and I'm going to tear this down and show you guys what we got. So as far as for my computer, I'm running this Microsoft Surface Pro 4, which seems to be a pretty good computer for me for this role. It's powerful enough for what I need it to do. It runs full Windows, so I don't have a lot of software limitations. Um, and it's just kind of a nice, handy computer for this. Um, the heart of the radio system here is my Yaesu FT818. And I have set up with the auto tuner on top. Um, and I got the pack frame on it, and I have it in this bag. I also have a Yaesu FT60R um, on here as well. So these are my two main radios. Um, this is my USB interface for connecting my radio to the computer. And these are my couple main antennas. This is an off-center fed dipole that is cut for 40. And then this is an off-center fed dipole cut for 80. So if I need to do like Nivis type of stuff, this is the antenna. But if I need a shorter antenna and it's faster to get up and I'm fine using like 40 and 20 and above, this is the antenna I'm going to grab. Um, so that's right in the main thing. I have a little log book here so I can make contacts and log them in that. I have two 5 amp hour 3S lithium polymer batteries. So this is my power system, so I have 10 amp hours total on board. Um, and if I needed more power, I could add more power and supplement with other stuff. So there's a power system. For accessories in here, there's my pen. It works with a notepad. I also have a pair of headphones, in case I want to use those. Um, I also have an inline uh, audio recorder that I can use to record, and I have the auxiliary cable I can use to plug into this and then plug my headphones in so then I can actually hear what's going on. Um, extra fuses, these are good to have, um, as well as a LiPo battery alarm, so I have so I know when my batteries are going dead. That's pretty much the bulk of the main pocket, and this back pocket here, um, I have a map of the state of Oregon, which is handy to have. Um, I have the user manual for my FT818ND. Um, I believe this is the manual for the auto tuner. This is, yeah, this is for the auto tuner, so I'm able to make sure I have that. I don't think I need that really, but I have it in case I do. Um, this is a cheat sheet that I made for my two main HTs to be able to program in a repeater in case I'm in a new location or need to program in a new repeater for both my Yaesu VX8 and for my FT60R. This is just a shortcut I have so I know how to do it if I have to. And, not be completely searching through the manual. I have a copy of the band plan in here. It's always good to have one of these handy. I have another notepad. And that's the back pocket. In this top pocket here, I have microphone and the leads I need to hook up my radio. Um, and that exhausts this pocket. And then in this main pocket here in the front, uh, here I have my throw bag in line. Um, then this this gives me a little arborist throw bag and this uh, like 100 pound paracord. And I believe I have about 50 feet of it here tied up. Um, and this this works really well to be able to just to throw a line up over a tree to like hoist up an antenna. I really like this so far. Um, here is an XT60 extension because I use XT60 plugs on all of my power equipment. I know a lot of hams use Anderson power poles. I have a lot of stuff that's already equipped with XT60s and I prefer that connector personally. Um, here I have 25 feet of uh, BNC coax. This is RG8X. Um, I haven't had any problems with this so far. Um, in this front pocket I have a couple more short lines. These are each I believe about 20 feet long. Um, so this I can tie onto the ends of my antenna um, and then use these to tie off uh, to like other trees or whatever I have available. And then this bottom pocket, um, this 
is a lead that plugs from XT60 through my fuses to my radio, which does have an Anderson Power Plug adapter on the back, so I am Anderson Power Plug compatible if I come across stuff with Anderson Power Pulls, but I predominantly use the XT60 connector. And then I also have this deal that I made, that this goes from XT60, and then it has an XT60 out, so I can use this to then power my radio. And then it gives me the two other plugs. So I have a, a standard 12 volt plug from a car that I can use to charge like my computer or radio and stuff. And then this JST plug I have hooked up with this. So this JST lead here, what this goes to is this little tiny LED. So if I need a really low power light solution, um, like if I'm in a tent or something or it's dark, I can use this as a light for my station so I can see what's going on or be able to actually like read my notebook and stuff. Um, so that's kind of the power stuff there. And then I also have this adapter, which is the other side of the car port plug. And it just goes to two um, XD60s. So I could plug in this, and then I could plug this whole deal into the car. And then I still don't lose this plug. And then I have another XD60 to plug in, like my inverter or any other accessories I have. Um, and then the last pocket here on the side, I keep some of the smaller stuff. So here's an extra battery for my handheld. And here is the car charger for my handheld. So I'm able to charge my handheld through my main power system with that. I also have a couple Type-C USB cables. And then I have these couple little bags, which is little connectors. And then also, I believe I forgot it in here, I also have the rubber duck that came with the 818. Um, so that's the dump of the bag. I'm going to reorganize this a little bit better and kind of set up a hasty station here. And I also forgot to show this little bag. So right here is the AC um, charging cord for the Surface Pro 4. And in this little bag, I have a car charger for the Surface Pro 4 and it also has a USB port on it as well. So I'm able to use that. I also believe I have a USB to 12 volt deal in here. Yep, I do. So I can use this too and it's going to fast charge. I need to like charge my phone or something else. Um, here I have a knockoff hack RF um, and then this here's another type C cable here's the micro USB for the hack RF here's a USB hub this is another micro USB cable just in case uh, a flash drive and the antenna for the hack RF I have other antennas if I think I'm gonna need them but this is just a nice little simple one with an SMA connector and it plugs on so with that, this kind of also supplements me a little bit, so then I also have a software-defined radio on board that's useful for all kinds of stuff, as well as the other charging accessories. So this is kind of the total radio kit. So here's kind of the field setup. So I got my FT60R, I got my 818, my Surface Pro, and my Hack RF with notepad. Um, currently I have the Hack RF hooked up to the computer. I can just unplug that and plug in the 818 or I can use my hub if I want to do both. Currently I'm using the charger to charge um, the laptop but I also could use it to charge my handheld. Um, or the the other thing worth noting is the 818 does have an internal battery built into it which is a nice feature. So I do also have that battery um, if I run out of other batteries. Um, I do not have an antenna currently hooked up to the 818. I just kind of wanted to show you guys this. I do have digital modes working through my interface now. Um, I So I can do stuff like WinLink and other digital modes that I've been kind of experimenting with. There will probably be some more videos of that here eventually. But winlink has been a nice feature to have. I really like the idea of having that because then if I'm out in the woods or like today I lost power at my house momentarily and you know if power would have gone out like for longer I could have used email to like email my boss or something. Um, so that was, that was nice. But this is kind of just the emergency kit. I just wanted to kind of show you guys. I've been tweaking on it and putting different things in and out of it. But I, I like the setup. This summer I want to do a lot with it. And I'm going to go do some stuff in the woods and do some more actual deployments. And I'll, I'll, I'll bring you guys along and see if we can make some contacts. This is kind of the base kit. And I'm going to go probably deploy this sometime off my motorcycle and then with that we can uh see what we can get so thank you guys for watching this is my little kind of radio setup